Welcome to the Cross Border Interviews, the show where we sit down with local elected leaders from all corners of Canada. Now, over the course of this episode, we'll be learning about who our guest is, what drives them, and how they are working to make their community a better place for everyone. Today, we had the honor to meet our guest in person at the most recent Alberta Municipalities Conference, where he was an observer for the Association of Manitoba Municipalities. Please help me welcome Swan River, Manitoba Mayor Lance Jacobson to the show. But before we get into today's interview, I just want to take a moment and say thank you. Thank you to all of our guests who have all accepted a spot on this show to make municipal issues matter again. Municipalities are the government of proximity. They are the ones that impact our lives on a daily basis. And the people that I'm interviewing, talking to, are on the front lines of that work. So if you can, hit that subscribe button so you can stay up to date on all of our latest interviews with amazing, amazing guests like today's. So with that, on to our episode. I really appreciate it. I want to start with the sort of basic question that I've asked every single municipal leader I've ever chatted with. So you're no exception. Where did your sense of duty to serve your community come from? Well, first of all, um, my community, I felt that it was important to be a part of it. I've volunteered for many years uh, on different uh, organizations and so forth. And when municipal came to mind, I thought I could be at the forefront with the people, you know, and uh, first in line, so to speak, as far as uh, uh, being connected to uh, all the people and, and, and getting to know other municipalities and working with them as well as, you know, provincial counterparts and so forth. And making a difference, you know, just trying to make a difference and, and work our, the best we possibly can to make our community just a better place. So why municipal for you? So you could have chosen many different levels of uh, politics, but at the end of the day, and this is where the show comes in, you chose municipal. You chose the government of proximity, according to Scott uh, Pierce, the president of FCM. So what was it about the municipal allure that you said Lance's voice would be best served municipally? I feel we're closer to the people. Uh, and quite honestly, that's what it is. Um, uh, people, you're, you, you can connect to people a little bit easier because you're, in a, you know, I guess in a smaller setting. And, uh, and then I think that you can uh, be a, a stronger voice for them at the same time. Was it an easy choice? Because getting involved locally, because you're not going off to Winnipeg to do your job. No. You're not going off to Ottawa to do your job. So you're in your community 24-7. And that means that decisions you make around that council table sometimes may be difficult and sometimes maybe you may hear things from your residents. So when you, when you present and go in front of council and you are making those motions as mayor, how do you make sure that you have the least amount of impact with knowing that you are the closest to the people and you're going to impact them the most? The least amount of impact? Yeah, because the affordability crisis across Canada right now, people are struggling mm -hmm. and you don't want to exacerbate that issue right so you have to try to find a balance of making sure that your community moves forward without doing it on the backs of your residents so how do you do that that's difficult <laughs> uh, that's, that's a quite a loaded question but you know um, it's a, a question that a lot <clears throat> of municipalities are dealing with it is, you know, we're, our community is dealing with homelessness and, and crime and, and, and addictions and so forth and trying to also balance what the needs of the community are, if it's recreation or, you know, street cleaning, RCMP uh, costs and so forth, you know. So it's it's a tough balance that, that we do have and we have a good group of uh, municipal uh, leaders in, in our community and, and also in our whole entire valley that are working really hard to, to do what they possibly can to... Uh, meet the needs or the demands of the community without too much uh, financial burden as well, which is a very difficult thing to do. So how do you do it? Because it, it, at the end of the day, you have to make the tough choices and you have to get the most information from the people on the ground, but also from people who aren't in your echo chamber on social media or Facebook and all that. Yeah. And you have to talk to people. Is that a big part of what you do on a day-to-day -day basis you, when you come up to those decisions? You, you, you do. You're always you know, talking to as many people as you can to get feedback from them. But one thing that's important is I'm not making those decisions. Council as a whole makes yeah. those decisions. And when we're talking about budget or, or processes that we deal with, if it's resolutions or so forth, then we are making those decisions together as, as one, as a whole. Um, 
um, we try to involve the community as possible as much as we possibly can if that means town hall meetings and, and so forth that we'll do that Is um, there an apathy in Swan Rivers do people actually want to give their feedback because I'm hearing from municipal leaders across Canada and slowly starting to hear from municipal leaders in Manitoba that people aren't engaged right now whether it be because municipal politics isn't something that they think about that often or it's because they have other things going on in their lives. Do you find people are it, willing to give their feedback to you? Typically, in the past, uh, you, you definitely have to say that people are, are not connected, uh, uh, maybe not want to be connected. Yeah, true. In the last few years, we've tried to do what we can, if it's social media or just having you know a town hall or uh, meetings or trying to get involved a little bit more with the Chamber of Commerce and so forth. Um, we try to engage them to get a little bit more feedback from them. So it's not an easy thing. Uh, there are still people out there that don't really care much about <laughs> politics even though politics uh, uh, involves them every single day everything that they do uh, our decisions that we make will impact at some point in time in their lives now I, I want to talk about the town for a, a second here and before I do this I want to preface this question by saying this is a conversation between you and I this is not a motion of council this is not a direction of council this is not a policy of council this is the mayor's opinion <laughs> we get emails about this question for fair, enough, fair enough fair <laughs> enough Fair enough. <clears throat> in, in your opinion, what is the biggest issue as of recording right now, right here today, facing your community? I would say that our biggest uh, concern right now that's facing our community is the the crime, uh, the the uh, the addictions problems, uh, and, uh, and and theft. You know, those are, and, I, and of course, some of the homelessness uh, as well. But those are some of the things that that are really on the forefront of uh, the minds of the people in our community. So you mentioned things that are <clears throat> traditionally in the provincial and federal jurisdictional homelessness, housing, yeah. mental health, provincial health. Municipalities are being asked to do a lot more with less. How are you navigating this new reality that municipalities are under with trying to address these issues that are more prevalent in your community than, say, five, ten years ago? Well, you know, just to, 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 to think back when I was first elect, elected in 2010, never thought that we would have to be uh, elected uh, officials be worrying about uh, health care worrying about crime and policing and, and so forth not saying that we were removing ourselves from that but we that was just something that we really didn't have to lobby too much for now fast forward to today and we are we are doing those things. We are in our community recruiting for, or helping to recruit for uh, doctors and nurses and EMTs and so forth, and uh, and and police, uh, and then of course dealing with the uh, the issues of homelessness and and drug addiction or or um, substance abuse and so forth, and it's not an easy thing for us to deal with because. For us, <clears throat> our counselors are, you know, part-time people. They have other lives that they have to live to and, and go to work every day. So it's not an easy thing, and, and it's a balance. And we, we're dealing with it the best we possibly can, uh, trying to build the partnerships with the provincial and federal government, making sure that they hear. Do you buy residents as well, though? Oh, yeah, absolutely. And, and, and I think right now I can say that, you know, we do have the buy-in from the residents. We do have uh, groups that are working with us and uh, within the municipality and the provincial government as well, but uh, we have a long ways to go. So I want to turn to my last segment here because I am cautious of time and I know you're a busy man. Mm -hmm. um, I want to talk about my favorite subject is tourism. Now, I just happened to be able to travel through uh, Manitoba just recently, visiting Dauphin, visiting Roblin, visiting Selkirk, Winnipeg, Portage of the Prairie, so on and so forth. I want to get back next summer. I'm going to head to Swan River because you've graciously accepted a spot to come on my show. What should I do? What are, should, what are some of the tourist spots in your community that tourists need to see? Well, I'm glad that you asked that. And you mentioned a few places in, in the Parkland District as well that you were visiting. And definitely we, uh, we would like to see you come to our community or in our valley uh, next year. But when you, when, and on top of the things that we did talk about, the negatives, but we have a lot of positive stuff too. And uh, we are located in a, in a really nice part of the province, in a, in a valley, in the Parkland District. And uh, we have beautiful places. Places for fishing, if you like Ooh, that. Okay. Uh, you know, <laughs> you know, there we have two large areas where uh, there's a ton of fishing. Uh, there's also a lot of uh, backcountry uh, driving that you can do. Um, beautiful areas where uh, the, on the agricultural side of things, um, we just have uh, a lot of great things that you can come and see. And we often uh, say that we have. Uh, 
it's almost like God's country uh, <clears throat> where we are. And, and I also want to mention that we have... Um, uh, a couple good First Nations groups that uh, that are with us and are good good partners, and they have great places for you to visit as well. So where where can we find you on a Friday night after a long week of council meetings, council uh, presentations? Where can we find you in the community? Is it out in a local watering hole or out in the middle of a river lake <laughs> trying to catch some fish? Well, you know what? Um, you you won't, probably won't catch me at a watering <laughs> hole. That might have been maybe uh, 20 years ago or something like that. But uh, now, you know, a lot of times it's in enjoying my uh, backyard that we have that we built uh, between my wife and and I and uh, we just like to have some quiet time after a, a long week but often we will head up to the lake and do a little bit of fishing and camping as well whenever we possibly can so just to take in the nature and, and the beautiful area that we have. So the million dollar question has to be asked then what makes your community such a unique place to live to work and to raise a family? Well you know what um, you, often you hear those questions and and you think okay we're living in an area where you know if you you have to take a step back to have a look and see right but one thing we have is good clear space and air to breathe uh, if you want to commute you're not driving too far away from uh, work every day you don't have the half hour uh, commute and we just have just a, a beautiful piece of, uh, of of this country that we have that we can showcase and, and you can have a great time and it's friendly and people are always willing to give a li uh, lifting hand as well. So, Lance, beautiful place. Thank you so much for doing this. Greatly appreciate it. I thank know, you. I know you're at the Alerted Municipalities Conference right now, so thanks for taking a brief moment and come and chat with me. I appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you for joining us for another great episode of the Cross Border Interviews. Your continued interest in diving deep into the issues that shape our communities across Canada is both inspiring and essential to our mission of the show. Now, as we wrap up, it is my hope that you've gained valuable insights into the intricate world of municipal politics from our guest. Now, if you found this dialogue as engaging as I did, don't forget to hit that subscribe button today. By subscribing, you're not just staying up to date with the latest conversations, but you're also playing a vital role in supporting our endeavor to bring you more meaningful content like you saw today. Now, we couldn't embark on this journey without your support as well. Creating content that sheds light on the issues affecting municipalities requires dedication and resources. Now, if you believe in our mission and want to help us to continue to grow, please consider visiting our support page, conveniently linked in the show notes or by visiting www.crossborderinterviews.ca. Every contribution, big or small, goes a long way in ensuring that we can keep delivering the kind of content that you've come to expect from us. Now, once again, thank you for being part of the Cross Border Interviews community. Your engagement is what fuels our passion for shedding light on the issues that truly matter. Until next time, stay informed, Stay engaged, and most importantly, just keep talking.